Vernon, Vernon just, uh, it was something that I told everybody at the very beginning of the week. I will not tolerate um, players that think it's about them when it's about the team. And um, we, cannot make, we cannot make decisions that cost the team and then come off the sideline and it's nonchalant. No. You know what? I, I, th this is how I believe, okay? I'm from the old school. I believe this. I would rather play with 10 people and, and just get penalized all the way until we got to do something else rather than play with 11 when I know that right now that person is not sold out to be a part of this team. It is more about them than it is about the team. I cannot play with them. Cannot win with them. Cannot coach with them. Can't do it. I want winners. I want people that want to win. When you look at um, all of our situations, right, we've all had knucklehead moments in the NFL, all three of us. Mm -hmm. uh, huge knucklehead moments yeah. that we recovered from. Mm -hmm. And yours, you know, I, w I was talking to DRC before you walked in mm -hmm. about just explaining that knucklehead moment and probably being at a low point like, you know what, I got to recover mm -hmm. and actually recover. Yeah, um, yeah, recovering. You're right. I've, I've, I've had, I mean, a, a ton of moments where any, I was just, any bigger than can't win with him. Yeah, uh, man, can't single do it. <laughs> single, that singletary, singletary moment, man. I was acting like, yeah, you know, I wanted. I, I looked up to Terrell Owens, man. So I thought I was to, man. I just. I was being a you was being silly. I was being a leader with your shirt off. Being yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah, in the him. club, <laughs> that, that, you know, pool parties with a shirt off. But it's all on how a lot of that, you know, you leave in the past and you move forward. And like you said, it's all on how you recover. How how are you going to move when you get thirty and thirty three years old? You know, people expect us to be men. They expect us to not be the same, but grow up. You know, grow up and 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 change. So I mean, it's how how you going to respond to? It? How you going to? going to act later on. It's not about how you start, it's how you finish. So when you look at that moment, right, if you go back to that moment in time, you were having inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. All the talent in the world, but a lot of inconsistency. Mm -hmm. After that moment, I think your top, like, you became consistent mm -hmm. in your performance. What was it that changed the, that led you to that? Like, because as a young kid, all of a sudden, you don't just change. You don't just, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I don't look up to T.O. anymore. Right. I think the experiences that I had from with, with running into a feud with Coach Singletary and then the, the other issues that I had within on the inside, just knowing if I don't get my act right, then I'm not going to be here. And I, my plan was to at least play 10 years. But I knew the only way to get there is I had to straighten up and get my attitude together or else I was going to be shipped off. I, I had, over a career, great coaches. We plan for Coach Davis, plan for Coach Shanahan, plan for Coach Gibbs, and all of a sudden I get in a situation with a coach who didn't understand me, with a coach who, who hadn't been in this position before, and Coach Zorn. So when you say taking the love away from the game, I know what that feels like. Who were the guys that put you in a position to regain or to rebuild your careers? Mm. Yeah, you know, I can, you know, I can attest to that. I mean, just my experience leaving San Francisco, you know, I just, I lost my love for the game because it, it was just a moment in my life where everything just wasn't going right. And then I get traded and I go to Denver. And then when I get to Denver, I started off playing, I played well, and then all of a sudden I'm getting 10 snaps a game trying to figure out what's going on. So after that, I was like, hey, I'm done. I'm about to retire. And then after the season, after we won the Super Bowl, nobody called me. I mean, nobody. The only team that was interested in me was the Washington Redskins. So I was like, man, do I want to play or should I hang it up? So I was like, you know, I'm going to try one more year. I'm going to go after it. And then got here and then, you know, I, I just found another level of humility. And I feel like when we go through those moments, we gain another level of that humility. And I just think I'm grateful for that experience because, I mean, like it made me a better man. You know, made me a better person, better man. But the fortunate thing was I was able to get another shot and prove that I could still play this game. Um, so I would have to say that Scott McLuhan, the general manager that I had in San Francisco, who was here um, after I left Denver, he brought me in, gave me a shot, you know, convinced the Redskins that I could still play, and there it was. Yeah. CP. Are you serious? He's gone! Fanny! Fanny! Pass all the way! Touchdown, Redskins!
Redskins, 64 yards.